A top priority these past two sessions for both the GOP and the DFL has been job creation. We are here right now to talk with the chair of the Senate Taxes Committee, Julianne Ortman, to find out how this tax bill helps create jobs. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, thanks for having me. Chair Ortman, let's begin with just last week you expressed disappointment with the governor's veto of the first tax bill. Now you're back at it. So what's your ultimate goal with this new proposal? Well, I would say more than disappointment. I was very frustrated and I think a lot of members here at the Capitol are because so many of us came here to try and work on uh, improvements in the economy. The Minnesota families and businesses have really been struggling in the last economic recession. And while government doesn't create jobs, we need to do what we can to make sure that we have a tax environment that fosters job creation in the private sector. And so that's what this bill is about. It's about creating opportunities for Minnesota businesses to compete nationally and for them to um, have a reduced set of fixed costs and some financial incentives, if we can, to, um, to engage in more economic activity. And so there are some features of this bill that I'm convinced will do that. And let's talk about some of those features that specifically help with job creation. Yeah, one of the biggest ones, I think, is the upfront capital equipment. It sounds very dense, but it's actually a sales tax exemption. Minnesota law currently has a sales tax exemption for any business that's going to buy capital equipment. That's the, the hardcore manufacturing equipment. But the problem has been over the last several years that rather than being a point of sale exemption where the business doesn't have to pay the sales tax at the time of the purchase, the state has required a refund program. So they've been required to pay the sales tax at the point of purchase and then apply for a dense refund program that might get them a refund a year later. Well, we want to jumpstart those orders. And so by saying they can have a point of sale uh, sales tax exemption that reduces the cost at the time of sale and helps them to know that they can invest now and not have to go through the arduous process of a refund. So that would apply for all of the businesses in the state of Minnesota that have 50 uh, employer, employees or fewer. And that's a pretty widespread group. It's about 14% of our manufacturing uh, industry, which has been severely hit by the economic recession. It's such an important feature. It will surge uh, orders and economic activity because it benefits not just the purchaser, but also the seller and all those employees that would be involved in building the capital equipment and supplying it. So it will have really good positive impacts. A cornerstone of the proposal is to eventually eliminate, or of the previous proposal anyway, was to eventually eliminate the business property tax. Eventually it came forth as a freezing of the business property tax. The governor still had concerns about that, primarily with the impacts to the budget in the out year. So what does this bill do to address the governor's concerns? This bill has a one-year freeze. I would like to have eliminated it altogether, phasing it out over time, or at least freezing uh, permanently. But be in, in uh, recognition of the governor's concerns, um, we have frozen for just one year. We'll come back next year and hopefully we'll be able to freeze again and then start that elimination process. Because the state general levy is really a huge burden on our businesses. Just like homeowners, businesses pay local property taxes. They pay for their city taxes, their county taxes, school district taxes, met council taxes. But on top of that, they also pay a state business property tax that was just put into law in 2001. And it's grown every single year become so burdensome with the recession that's hit, it adds to the cost of doing business in this state and, and it really creates a problem for us in terms of competitiveness with other states. So our uh, businesses find a, the 45th worst business tax climate here in Minnesota and we are doing everything we can to improve that so then they can succeed and hire more Minnesotans to do their work. And let's talk a little more big picture with that whole business climate idea and um, you know the last couple of years we've had two bonding bills. We have had streamlining of the permitting process and this tax bill. Would you say that the GOP has done a good job, excellent job, kind of great what you think your caucus has done, your party has done to try to improve the business climate? I think we've changed the whole conversation at the state capitol. I think everyone here now agrees with our priority, which is to allow that private sector to thrive. And I think that by doing that, we really have succeeded this year. This bill will be a big test. It's uh, scientifically calculated according to my uh, scientific theories to draw a signature. And when that is completed, I believe people will, will feel that we've com uh, fulfilled our mandate, not just on creating a better jobs climate and, and a tax 
climate for Minnesotans, but also in the way we imposed fiscal discipline on our budget, taking it from what was a, a planned $39 billion budget to $35 billion, taking our reserves from what was $266 million to $1.1 billion, and starting to pay back those schools. We've done a really good job of imposing fiscal discipline and changing the conversation at the Capitol to how can we help the private sector and finding that that really is um, success for the state of Minnesota when our private sector succeeds. So it's fair to say that you believe Minnesota businesses are in a better position to create jobs at this point. If given the majority position again after the November election, what are some of the things that you would like to do to move forward with this concept? Well, we need to continue with the phase out of the state general levy. There are several uh, tax working groups working in the interim here that will come back with reports about property tax reform and other tax reforms that we really need to get underway, possibly the sales tax reform. But we want Minnesota to be more competitive. And if there's some way to lower the sales tax, that would be very important. We're one of the highest in the region. So there's lots of work ahead for taxes. There are other uh, issues as well. I'd certainly like to work on um, some of the um, the um, Met Council reforms. I think the Met Council has grown to a place where people don't recognize it from its original um, authorization. So th there are many ways that we can reform government and really work to create limited government in favor of empowering individuals in the private sector. Senator, my last question for you then is, with session winding down, do you think Minnesotans are in a better position now than they were two years ago? I do think so, and I'm very optimistic that it's getting better every day. Okay, Senator Julianne Ortman, with those words, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me.